I've heard, I've heard a lot about um because I, I talked to a guy called uh, Reggie in my first season, and he's he's an autistic actor, and he was telling me about um trying to go for autistic characters in in like a movie or a TV series or a show, and it if if you've seen him, he is like the the spitting image of like Hollywood. Um, looks like attractiveness and like he's really really bonny guy if you can say that and he c- he cannot get any autistic roles at all because of the way he looks like they want someone who's short they want someone who's white and male want someone with glasses and it looks a bit nerdy mm-hmm. um bit of a skinnier frame and i suppose like so it's really depressing that isn't it because we're always talking about trying to get representation in movies and TV series, but they're intentionally using the stereotypical lens of what they think autism looks like to find people to play those roles. (laughs) Yeah. And well, I think the good news is we're finally getting the attention that we deserve because I happen to audition for, I don't know if you've heard of the show, everything's going to be okay. But there's an autistic Rings actress that, yeah, there's an autistic actress that plays an autistic character. And I also had the wonderful opportunity to also audition for that role. And even though I didn't get it, it still went to another autistic actress. And I was very happy about that. And Good. actually the same thing for asexuality too. I'm sure if if you're in the aspect community, you've heard of Bojack Horseman and there's an asexual character on the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Todd. Todd. And later on <laughs> in the season, spoiler alert, in the sixth season to be exact, he meets an asexual rabbit and they end up getting mm. together. And yeah, they yeah. were also looking for an asexual actress for that character. And I was in the running along with Echo Gillette and it ended up going to Echo Gillette. And, but this time it was because I was too far away and I was like, so close. But the fact that <laughs> I got God. noticed by the Bojack, Bojack uh, Horseman as well. Yeah. Oh my Would have God. been crazy, but I, I do agree that Echo Gillette portrayed her very well and still a sexual representation. So that's what makes me happy the most is that we're we're slowly building it up. It is taking a lot of time, but we're we're getting there for sure. Yeah. That's really great to hear. Like I've I've only really he- heard uh, negative things, so it's good to to hear that there is some representation coming through. And uh just just thinking thinking of Bojack Horseman, he's like <laughs> that show is has been such a such a massive interest of mine for a long time. Typically because the main character is like a massive existentialist and he goes through like different crises and stuff. So I relate to that a lot of the ways. There's a lot of ways that I don't relate to him. <laughs> I could definitely say that. For sure. Yeah. But um no, I thought it's it's a really great show, isn't it? It's not it doesn't pull any punches. Um uh, definitely. Yeah. And they they do a really great job of not just showing that there's an asexual character, especially a man, because you don't see that often in media mm-hmm. as well. It's mostly asexual yeah. women. So we had male representation and you also saw that he was a romantic asexual. So they mm-hmm. were talking about how some asexuals are still in relationships, some asexuals sure. are not. So I overall, I think it's one of the best representations we've had so far, for sure. Wow. Hopefully get, we get more. Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> Preferably not in cartoon form as well. Yes, that is also very true. <laughs> so, um, you know, as far as like the, the autism and, and, and asexuality, I mean, have you have you been gravitating towards jobs that allow you to to talk about it or to to sort of represent it or do it as part of like a, an overarching movement. Is there anything that you've been involved in that's like specific to autism or asexuality? Um, In terms of asexuality, not necessarily because, you know, I kind of speak about it on my own terms. If it comes up, then that's when I'll speak about it. And that's solely because like, I'm not actively looking to advocate for the asexual community. It's just kind of sure. something that ended up happening, which is still mm-hmm. great. I love talking about it. It's just, there's times where I can't talk about it. I'm mostly known as an autistic advocate and I'm actually partnered with a couple local organizations and helping them out with 
not just representation, but helping other autistic adults find the services and accommodations that they need. So I think that's more of my platform as I tend to focus on autism. But if there's an opportunity where I can speak up about asexuality and especially the intersections between being autistic or neurodivergent and being on the LGBT plus mm -hmm. spectrum as well, yeah. then, of course, I'm going to take that opportunity. So, so this this podcast is uh, ticking the boxes then. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> I had to hop right on it. <laughs>